Now, if we put on our strategic thinking caps, these troops are important partly because of a single base called the Al-Tanf base, largely made up of 200 high-speed special operators. It isn't even located inside Jordan, but instead just across the fence over in Syria. Al-Tanf garrison is pretty much the only thing standing in the way of Iran having a clear straight shot supply route to funnel weapons through Iraq, through Syria, and then into Hezbollah in Lebanon. It's located right on the Baghdad-Damascus highway, and according to the Brookings Institute, it denies Iran one of the three potential land bridge routes between Iran and the Mediterranean. And so from the perspective of Iran and its proxy militia groups, they very much do not want the Al-Tanf base or Tower 22 in Jordan standing in their way. Because on February 7th, just a few days later, a US special operations mission kicked off inside Baghdad, the capital of Iraq. The target was none other than the leader of Kateb Hezbollah named Abu Barik al-Said, the man who was ultimately responsible for that attack on Tower 22 in Jordan. U.S. officials called the strike a quote-unquote dynamic hit, which is military buzzword speak for hitting a fast-moving target. That might sound very unimpressive because bombs take out large areas, right? Not exactly this time, good sir, because the attack used a Hellfire 9X missile, which is like yeeting a giant knife at your enemy. It's about five feet long, weighs 100 pounds, and just before impact, it springs out six knife blades or swords, like katanas everywhere. The missile's laser guided, so precise that you can target the exact seat in a car that you want to hit to minimize collateral damage for sensitive missions. There's no warhead or explosion, so you don't wound nearby people with shrapnel. The missile was said to have been fired from a Predator drone flying overhead. That's like threading a needle through a pinhole blind. So how did this drone succeed where past ones had failed? There are a number of theories and explanations from officials. According to preliminary reports from the military that haven't been made public yet, the enemy drone was either mistaken for friendly aircraft by the counter UAV radar systems, or it flew too low to the ground to even be identified by radar. It's unclear exactly what happened or if it was a combination of different factors. One thing the enemy could have done, I think, personally, if I was them, is I would study the schedule of takeoff and landings of the friendly drones on the base. This way, they could time their own attack so that the radars were already expecting an incoming friendly drone to land at that time. This way, Tower 22 would see the enemy drone and assume it was just a friendly one returning back to base as scheduled, basically fooling the radar system.